Welcome to a lesson that's designed to help understand what it means to divide by a fraction. First, let's say you buy three cakes and want each person to have one-eighth of a cake. How many people can you serve? Well, if you want each person to have one-eighth of a cake, we want to start by dividing each cake into eight equal pieces. So it probably would look something like this. So our goal here is to determine what is three divided by one-eighth, or how many one-eighths are there in three. So with this model, we can just count them. Each piece represents a serving, meaning each cake will have eight servings. So there are 24 servings, and therefore three divided by one-eighth equals 24. There are 24 one-eighths in three. Procedurally, we can determine this quotient two ways. One way is to write three as a fraction, three over one, divided by one-eighth, and then obtain a common denominator. We can see the common denominator would be eight, so let's go ahead and multiply this by eight over eight. This would give us 24 eighths divided by 1 eighth. So if our denominators are the same, that means the pieces are the same size, so the quotient is just the quotient of the numerators. 24 divided by 1 is equal to 24. There are 24 1 eighths and 24 eighths. This method normally is not shown in textbooks, the more traditional method would be to write three as a fraction, as three over one, and then instead of dividing, multiply by the reciprocal of one-eighth, which would be eight over one. If we do this, we multiply the numerators and then the denominators. Well, three times eight is twenty-four, which is a number of eighths in three, and then we would divide by one because each individual piece represents one serving. Twenty-four over one, or twenty-four divided by one is twenty-four. Now let's change this slightly and say that each serving is going to be two-eighths of a cake. I know this simplifies to one-fourth, but let's leave it as two-eighths for a moment. So we have three divided by two-eighths, meaning we want to determine how many two-eighths are in three. So let's go ahead and count them again. Those two pieces represent one serving, there's another serving, there's another serving, and so on. Since each two-eighths represents one serving, notice how we have a total of twelve servings. So three divided by two-eighths equals twelve, meaning there are twelve two-eighths in three. Again, procedurally, we could write this as three over one divided by two-eighths, obtain a common denominator, so we'll multiply this by eight over eight, So now we have twenty-four eighths divided by two eighths. And again, because our denominators are the same, the quotient is the quotient of the numerators. Twenty-four divided by two equals twelve. Again, this works because both of these are in eighths, meaning the pieces are the same size. And then more traditionally, we would have three over one times eight over two, the reciprocal of two eighths. Three times eight is twenty-four, the number of eighths in three cakes. Then we would divide by two, because it takes two pieces to make one serving. Twenty-four divided by two is twelve. Now let's try this again, where now we want each serving to be three-eighths of a cake. So we want to determine what is three divided by three-eighths, or how many three-eighths are there in three. And again, we'll go ahead and count them. There's one serving of three-eighths. There's another serving of three-eighths, and so on. Notice how we have a total of eight servings of size three-eighths, so the quotient is equal to eight. Again, there are eight three-eighths in three, so procedurally we'd have three over one divided by three-eighths, obtain a common denominator, Notice by doing this, we're determining how many eighths are in three. So there are twenty-four eighths in three divided by three eighths. Our denominator is the same, so we can find the quotient of the numerators to determine this quotient. Twenty-four divided by three is eight. 
or we have the option of multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiply by eight-thirds instead of dividing by three-eighths. Twenty-four divided by three. Again, three times eight gives us a number of eighths in the three cakes. We divide by three because it takes three pieces to make one serving. Quotient is eight. Let's continue with this and now consider how many we can serve if we want a cake size of four-eighths. Again, I know this simplifies to one-half, but let's leave it as four-eighths. So we want to determine what is three divided by four-eighths, or how many four-eighths are there in three. So it'll take four pieces to make one serving. So notice how each cake provides two servings. So we can see we have a total of six servings, or there are six four-eighths in three. Again, let's go ahead and show both methods by hand. Three over one divided by four-eighths. Obtain a common denominator, which again just tells us how many eighths there are in three. There are twenty-four eighths in three. We're dividing by four-eighths. Our denominator is the same, so we can ignore the denominators and divide the numerators. Twenty-four divided by four equals six. Or more traditionally, three over one times eight-fourths. We have twenty-four divided by four equals six. Now let's take a look at one more example that's a little bit more challenging. Now let's say you want each person to have five-eighths of a cake. So we want to determine what is three divided by five-eighths. So again, it takes five pieces to make one serving. So there's one serving, two servings, three servings, four servings, and notice how there's not enough to make a complete fifth serving. But because one serving is five pieces, and we have four pieces, our quotient is four and four-fifths. Again, it's four-fifths because it takes five pieces to make one serving, and we have four of the five pieces. So procedurally, this would be three over one divided by five-eighths. Obtain the common denominator of eight again. So now we have twenty-four-eighths divided by five-eighths. Common denominator, so the quotient is the quotient of the numerators, which is twenty-four divided by five. This is our quotient, but it's an improper fraction. Let's verify that it is four and four-fifths by dividing twenty-four by five. There are four fives in twenty-four. Five times four is twenty. We subtract, have a remainder of four. So this does verify that our quotient would be four and four-fifths, the remainder over the divisor. Or we can write this as three over one times eight-fifths. Notice how this would give us twenty-four over five, or twenty-four-fifths, which we just saw was four and four-fifths. So now that we've seen how to model division by a fraction, let's review the procedures by hand to determine the quotient involving a fraction. Again, there are two main ways. One way is to, instead of dividing by C over D, multiply by the reciprocal, which would be D over C. But I think the second method actually makes a little bit more sense. If we obtain a common denominator, we can simply divide the numerators. So for example, A over B divided by C over B is equal to A over C, or A divided by C. Again, this works because if our denominators are the same, the pieces are the same size, and therefore A pieces divided by C pieces would just be A divided by C. I hope you found this lesson helpful.